when I first bought this rifle, I took it home and I showed my mom, and she's used to Brownings and Weatherbees and Marlins and stuff, you know. Um, you know, they're real pretty guns. Well, this isn't pretty, but, you know, the thing is, it's not supposed to be pretty. It's a combat rifle. And she thought it was ugly, you know, and thought, you know, I paid too much money for it when I only paid $200 for it. She thought that was too much for, for an ugly gun. But I'm River Bay, and welcome to my gun kingdom. So for an SHTF um, situation that you could possibly be in someday, um, you want it to include an AK-47 into your arsenal. Um, now there's all kinds of choices that you can make out there. Now in my left hand I have a Warsaw um, and I just added a prism scope on. Um, and with the prism scope it's 4x fixed and it has an etched in radical so you don't have to rely on a battery. Um, it does come with with a um, blue and green illumination and but that would require a battery um, so I want to practice without using a battery. Um, it also comes with um, on the top here uh, backup sights that you can adjust the windage and elevation to. So uh, if you would ever lose your scope or if it ever would get cloudy or, or fogged over, um, you could always go to this back up here on top. But you know, this scope, it's a UUQ and it's a pretty inexpensive scope. The time this video is being made, you can pick them up for around 50 to $60. Um, I do have a Midwest uh, industries um, side rail mount that I put on it. I like this one because it got really good reviews um, and it has actually a lock on them. There's some more inexpensive ones out there that have the lever here but there's no lock that locks in the lever once you've set it into place. And you, you kind of have to play around with it. The other day I was shooting this gun making another video for you and it came loose and it's because I didn't have it tightened down. But we're, you know, really, you've got to take the whole thing off the gun to adjust it. And there's an adjusting screw right here and you just have to play with the tension. And if it comes loose on you, you know, you're going to have to tighten it up again. So it's really snug now. It took a lot of thumb pressure to get it into place and hold it there. But it, it seems solid and I shot probably about another 20 rounds after I readjusted it and put it back on the gun. So uh, Midwest Industries makes really good products and um, you know you pay a little bit more but that's what you pay for is the quality. Okay, um, I did have a riser on this gun and I didn't like it uh, since the, Scott, the, the stock is already low enough you know um, so you want that fast acquisition that you're you know that you're wanting when you bring a combat rifle up to your um, to your eyesight but you don't want the stock so low and you have a riser on here that it's going to put you way below um, your eye level looking through the scope so you got to be careful so I took it off and I just mounted it directly onto the Midwest Industries here but you know the Warsaw, I bought this so oh, when they first were introduced in the United States I was pretty young at the time but I only paid two hundred dollars for it and now at the time this video is being made I find on the internet they're, they're around seven hundred to upwards to nine hundred dollars for a Warsaw. Now they're not they're not the greatest AK out there um, as you can see I have also a uh, Zostava M70 um, AK and the features on it are somewhat a little bit different like for instance it does have the combination where you you when you pull up the safety lever on it you can actually lock your bolt back into place so on this Warsaw you don't have that cut out on the safety lever to where it'll help stay you know keep your bolt open 
but as you can see the bolts remaining open I'm just lucky that it stays open but most of the time it won't it'll just go closed on me but um, and also this this um, receiver is 1.5 millimeters thick where the wire saw I don't know the exact dimension of the receiver on this the, the thickness but this one I, I'm sure is 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 much more sturdier than than the wire saw but you know even though this is uh, not as good a quality as, as Zostava, I mean, it would hold up for a long time and you wouldn't have to really worry about it um, if you decide to go with this. Would, it would probably save you probably a couple hundred dollars over the Zostava because these are pushing upwards close to a thousand dollars now. Now, I, I bought this a few years ago, probably three years ago, and I paid, I think, around $7.95. So, um, so at the time this video is being made, you could be paying almost $1,000 for these now. I'm not positive on that. You'll have to do the research on it. But anyway, um, what we're going to do today, um, this uh, scope um, set up here on this Warsar is all sighted in for 50 yards. And we're at the 100-yard range. And so we're going to shoot it at the 100-yard range. And um, now I probably will have a bullet rise. I'm sure I will. Um, so I'll probably just aim a little bit lower. Um, I'll have to see when I get set up here and look through the look through the scope. But um, yeah, um, now you can adjust the focus on this on these prism scopes back here with this adjustment here, this ring. But um, and that should help you a lot. Now you know there's uh, controversy with closing one eye, leaving both eyes open, and you know, it all depends on the way you were raised and what you're used to. Um, personally, I would like to be able to practice enough to be able to leave both eyes open, and that's why I bought this prism scope, because uh, it's 4X, it's fixed. It's not quite as powerful as a rifle scope that you probably wouldn't want to put on these combat rifles, because these, these are not sniper rifles by any means. Uh, they're really meant to under 300 meters so now they can go out to a thousand meters and, but you'd have to play with the sights and um, adjust them a lot to go out to a thousand meters but I would have another gun for your SHTF scenario for um, like a sniper rifle and, the, and then have these sighted in for under 300 meters is what I would do all right, so now when we talk about further into scopes and everything, I, I was really set on these red dot scopes. And, but the thing is, the red dot scopes, um, you know, they require a battery. And if you don't have a battery in an SHTF scenario, these are useless. What are you going to do with them, you know? So that's why another reason I went to the prism scope. Now, with the red dot scope, I certainly can leave both eyes open, okay? And I mount the scopes, as you can tell, I mount them as far forward as I can get them, all right, to help with that, um, leaving both eyes open. So, you know, with a battery, you know, and this thing works great for fast acquisition and everything, but if I was ever in an SHTF scenario, then it wouldn't be any good to me. So, um, that's the main reason I went to a prism scope, and that's something you should consider too. Now, eventually, I will have to get one for here, but these Midwest Arm Midwest Industries side rails do not fit the Zostava. Okay, so they will fit other AKs like the Warsaw here and other AKs, uh, but you'd have to do your research on that. But I know for sure this Midwest. Uh, industries side rail mount will not fit the Zostava. I tried to put it on there and it will not fit. I did some research and Zostava makes their own side rail mount that you have to buy for this M70. So that's the only one that will fit it. So um, I'm going to have to place one on order. And when I get that, then we'll do more shooting with the Zostava. But today we're going to shoot the uh, uh, Warsar here and um, show you this is a pretty good rifle. Um, it's battle proven, you know, and you know, they've done some improvements like this Zostava. This is probably your best quality gun for the price. And this is, 
If you don't have an AK right now, this is the one I would buy. I wouldn't buy a Warsaw, even though you can save a couple hundred bucks. I would still buy the Zastava. But if you have one of these, like I do, you want to put it to good use and put it in your arsenal for SHTF. There's nothing, nothing wrong with them if you already have one. All right. But also, I want to go over the mags in an SHTF scenario. Now, I've gone over these also in, in other videos, uh, my other SHT um, videos here on the channel. And I've talked about polymer versus um, the uh, steel mags. Now, the thing that I don't really care for with, with the uh, polymer is um, they are not heat resistant, you know, as far as like dropping them in a fire. In, in an SHTF scenario, you're going to be sitting around a campfire most of the time, and your rifle's going to be next to you. And if you would ever happen to drop the gun and the mag, the mag would probably burn up, okay, uh, or become so distorted you wouldn't be able to you wouldn't be able to use it. Now, in a normal day, you know, these are great for hunting. They're great for going to the uh, gun range. Um, you know, you could even go boondocking with them too, you know, as long as you have extra ones that, that, that's at your disposal. And I've, I've had some viewers write in and say, well, they've gone to war, you know, with these things and they're fine, they're durable, they're reliable and everything else, but they have an unlimited supply most of the time, um, you know, in, in the military. So they're always able to replenish them if they do get destroyed or, or whatever. But I know I dropped one the other day right out of my truck, right on the gravel. And of course, you know where it hit? It hit right on the, f the feed lips, you know, right on the gravel. And now I have a hard time loading it. This isn't, this isn't the one exactly, but it was for my Zastava. You know, and that's another reason I can't shoot this one today because I can't get the PMAG into the gun. Uh, because it did something to the front and then these can crack they can split and there's all kinds of things that can go wrong with them So SHTF scenario they they wouldn't be a good choice They come with a neat little dust cover as you can see here and you just flip that off and uh, but this keeps the dust out of them. That's kind of cool, you know, I'm not totally against them for a you know um, you know like for hunting and like I said just you know, boondocking or whatever, but for an SHTF scenario, they wouldn't be a good idea. They're not going to hold up like your steel mags will. Now, people have said, well, these get rusty. Well, they might get, you know, some surface rust on, but you just have to wipe them off and keep them as clean as possible. But the steel mags are your best choice for an SHTF scenario. So that's what you want to stick with. I even have uh, my, uh, my mag here for my... Uh, um, this is for, I got a magnet on here actually, I wonder what that was. But yeah, um, this is for my 308 sniper rifle, but this is a steel, steel mag too, as you can tell by my little magnet that I found on here. So I forgot that I uh, had it on there. All right, but anyway, um, so let's get ready and let's shoot the Warsaw today. We'll concentrate on this gun and the setup that we got. And, you know, and it, you know, when I first bought this rifle, I took it home and I showed my mom and she's used to Brownings and Weatherbees and Marlins and stuff, you know. Um, you know, they're real pretty guns. Well, this isn't pretty, but you know, the thing is it's not supposed to be pretty. It's a combat rifle. And she thought it was ugly, you know, and thought, you know, I paid too much money for it when I only paid $200 for it. She thought that was too much for, for an ugly gun, but you know what? It's effective and it works. It's always reliable, battle proven. A lot of history with this thing being in battle, so it'll never fail on you. I like the AR-15s. Definitely have one of those in my arsenal. Um, I have an AR-10. Like I said, my sniper rifle is an AR-10, and um, I also have a Colt LE 6940, and they scaled it down. It's an AR-15, but they scaled it down to look like an M4, but it doesn't have select fire. So that's in my arsenal too. So I don't have anything against ARs or anything like that, but I do have this included in my, in my scenario for uh, SHTF. So, well, thank you for joining me today, and uh, I appreciate you uh, watching my videos and everything. Uh, now we're gonna have fun with this war, sir.
So we want to get that red dot out of the way there. And we're going to practice with this prism scope. Uh, now I'm going to try to leave both eyes open here too. And now when I do that, I'm getting a double image. I notice that right away. And this is a 4x fixed scope, so not that much magnification with it. You can, you can adjust the focus with this ring back here, so that's one nice thing about it. All right, so let's talk about this magazine that I have here. Um, you know, YouTube doesn't allow us to bring uh, 30 round or more of a magazine on here. So I'm kind of glad about that because I wouldn't have found this if I would have brought my 30 round mags for these for this Warsaw here. But I found this Hungarian magazine and it's uh, called a tanker. I'll tell you what. It's built like a tank. This thing is solid. Um, I like the feed feed lips on it too. I mean, they're really thick and solid. If you drop this, you wouldn't hurt it for sure for an SHTF situation. But let's go ahead and load five here. And it loads really nice. Now you can load the AK with the bolt closed. That's okay. And let's put it in safe mode right now until we get it locked in here. All right. Oh boy, that's really nice. So I'm, I'm gonna put the crosshairs right on, right on the bullseye on that X. And okay, let's uh, let's load one back in there, and we can check to make sure. So we pull back just a little bit. Now you can you can check it too with the safety on. All right, so just lift up that lever, and just pull back slightly, and you can tell if there's one in there. But you know, with the AK-47, um, you really don't have to worry about if one went into battery or not. Uh, so with the AR-15, you have to always check it the AR-15 likes to be had the mag inserted with the bolt open especially if you have a full mag but the AK is not fussy all right let's see what we can do so the crosshairs are right there now I didn't talk about the trigger pull. I, I had a friend the other day that has a gauge and he uh, tested this uh, Warsar. It has a 2.1 trigger pull. He tested my Zostava and my Zostava has a 4.1 trigger pull. So <clears throat> that's a little bit light for a combat gun. Um, the Zostava, it, I, I guessed it like when I was making a video a couple weeks ago, I guessed that it was around four pounds. So I was right. But <clears throat> I was surprised when he did the test the other day with his gauge for this Warsaw and it was 2.1 pound trigger pull. So I was really surprised that it's that light, but let's see how it feels. Let's make sure our friend down there has his muffs on. He looks good, so we're ready to rock and roll. Here we go. Pull the gun tight into your shoulder if you're using a lead sled. Doesn't matter if you have it on a sled or not. Just always make sure you pull it tight into your shoulder. Here we go. trigger almost feels like a two-stage trigger. Uh, you can take up the slack on it. 
I kind of like that. Okay. Let's see if I can hold it a little steadier. Here we go. Here we go. All right. Okay, here we go. For close in, you know, 50 yards or less, I mean, you can't go wrong with a Warsar. And if you're gonna go out past 100 yards, or more that's when you'd want a sniper right but i hope i helped you out today and if i did hit that like button and make sure you hit the subscribe button and that way you'll be notified for future uh, videos that i do but also leave me a comment I, I enjoy hearing from you i enjoy hearing your stories you know tell me your experience with the ak's but definitely you want to include these uh ak's in your SHTF scenario arsenal. So make sure that you subscribe and don't forget to click that like button. I appreciate you watching. Thank you.